We're back. Hey, yo. Hey. What were we talking about earlier? I forget. I don't have the audio. We were talking about... What were we doing before this, guys? We were talking about oh, yeah, we were, how... We were playing some Mario Party. Party. Mario Party. Mario Kart, Mario Party. It's Mario Party. Yeah, 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 yeah. We were playing Mario Party. The fucking NPC one. I came in second somehow. Yeah, the fucking... We, we, set, Mar- we set an NPC to normal and it beat us. How? And we don't play casually, despite this what... This swept the floor with us. I don't get it. I, I swept the floor is an exaggeration. And it's it like, I usually play with, like, Master you. NPC, and it's yeah, like, it doesn't even do. do that well. They make dumb decisions. I don't get why a normal beat us. Fucking normie. No, I don't get it at all. I, I don't understand. Well, I'm mad about that. Also, I'm Brody. <laughs> I'm Jess. Oh, we're doing this again. I'm Rose! Yeah. yeah, and welcome to One Frame Off. Mm-hmm. We have already recorded this once already. It's take two. It's take two. <laughs> I was not take recording one. sound. Take two. <laughs> Something went wrong. Technical difficulties, guys, is uh, what it we say in the miss. entertainment industry. You didn't miss much. We did this. <laughs> we opened up some beers. Jess gave me a really firm handshake. I give very firm handshakes. Like... Like, close the deal kind of hand. Yeah, shake. yeah, yeah, exactly. It's Either what I'm really good at. Either close the deal or she's in the mafia, because holy shit. They do both. Yeah. Well, hold on a minute. They, it's like, it's we like... We give you offers you can't shakes. refuse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like... Either Handshakes you, you can't get away from. Either you for me, for the family, or you die. Yeah. Just shake on it. Just yeah. shake on it. Pinky I... Pump. I, I can't help you can't it. Break a pinky My dad no, taught me like, at a young will kill age you to break a pinky promise. that a firm handshake is everything you need to know about a person. And if you have a limped wrist handshake, oh, I judge yeah. you. Do you do you, do you guys remember the episode of King of the Hill? <laughs> where oh, yeah. the one where Hank actually meets George W. Bush Bruh. and and then like they shake his hand and he's just like, Oh my god. <laughs> what a limp. His handshake was limp. <laughs> I don't know if I believe this man. He's not my president anymore. <laughs> you know, um, I actually <laughs> bet Donald Trump has a very limp handshake because his wrist and hands are so small. I've seen that, but like, have you ever just actually seen the video he does where it's like he takes it and then he just like yanks it towards him? Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, that's weird. I didn't process. I didn't like observe it that much to like process that. But he's just a douchebag who, quite honestly, deserves to be cut out ever out of every movie that he's ever been in. Yeah, even, Home Alone even too. Home Alone. Yeah, especially <laughs> Home Alone. Is he in any other movies besides Home Alone? Yes, unfortunately. I can't think of any. It's always just been Home Alone. Yeah, Home Alone is always he's he's watching made, him give poor directions videos. to a child. Oh, I'm sure he has. But who knows? Maybe in a few years, um, that will be on King of the Hill. No, maybe in that a would few be great. Years, actually, like those... oh, they're 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 uh, bringing back King of the Hill. Really? I I don't agree with Wait, it at all King because um, Brittany Murphy isn't here for, to be Luann, but no. nevertheless, they apparently are rebooting it. That's Hold on, time out. I knew about How I Met Your Father, which is oh. a spinoff of How I Met Your Mother. Have you actually seen it? I'm. Terribly disappointed. The worst spinoff in history. How about your mother is so good? Uh, is right that 80s end, show? Right up People have end, issues with that. Really yes. good. I hate the ending of How I Met Your Mother. Oh, I, I was well, social. I was like not socially, but like emotionally invested mm-hmm. and socially invested in this. I think a lot of people in, were in this TV show. It, it was kind of a right letdown for a lot. Right up until the fucking ending, and I'm like, are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. That's who the mother is. Bullshit. Who's the mom? Some lady from the band of their wedding, and then she dies. Well, no. Oh. She, not, but it was well, Robin the no, whole time. No, not only does she fucking die, he goes and gets with fucking Robin. They're like, no, it's not. No! But have you her? actually seen How I Met Your Father, though? No. I, I refuse. I, saw I have the watched first episodes, episodes of that 80s show. Oh, no. Oh, I love that show. Can, we, can I also, it's fair to mention here that the, that 80s show is a stain. That on sitcoms, show. yeah. The I, only I, good I, thing, I prefer, the only good thing about it I is that, that Glenn show. Howerton was on that show and he <laughs> used the money that yes. he made from it to buy the camera to shoot. It's always sunny in Philadelphia, <laughs> people. Yep. No, that's like literally the only check that good off thing. your bingo board, Just, baby. Yep. 
Check it out for being aboard. Jessica mentioned um, <laughs> it's always sunny in Philadelphia already. Yeah. Let's continue. Let's check another thing off the bingo board. What are we all drinking today? Yes. <laughs> um, I already drank my New England cider. Oh, uh, we've been drinking a bit already. So yeah, we were happy I, I to see to each other again. Yeah, so you're welcome. I had to switch to water. I've, yeah, Rose has to drive. Mm-hmm. To drive I'm home. drinking. I've had a few sour monkeys by Victory, but it's not what I'm currently drinking. Victory! But halfway through, I might switch over to that. Right now, I'm doing another Compass Rose Car Hop, a blueberry lemonade sour. Which is it's a good repeater. Delicious. I feel like we've had that on here before. Yeah, yeah, it's seasonal and it's nice and light and it's delicious. crushable. It's one of the few sours I absolutely love. But Here's what's really it. happening is you've been drinking more craft beer and you're starting to enjoy it. I promise I you, by this time next the, year, you'll be drinking lagers. Well, you'll be a straight up snob. Yeah, no, it'll happen. Others. If you can, no, if you continue to expose yourself, it'll but happen. I love. I, I'm pointing to it. I lo- I'm pointing. When to I it first started drinking beer, I could only do porters or stouts. I love that. I, I love my ciders and I love certain sours. That car hop. That you will be drinking drink. lagers and fruited lagers by this time of next year if you continue at this rate. According to just keep drinking. Yeah, yeah. Just keep drinking. You really have to work at it. Just continue to drink. I I know it's work. (laughs) I know it's pressure. But just continue to knock it back, man. Just continue. All right, Brody. What are you drinking? (laughs) I just like one frame off. Keep drinking. (laughs) Drink responsibly. One frame off. Drink alcohol. No, no. Drink responsibly. Drink responsibly. Drink responsibly. Keep work responsibly. Can you cut this out? Drink No. No, Please. it's not getting cut out. Mm, it's funnier if I don't. Yeah. <laughs> they uh, hate me. They hate me. No. You should drink responsibly. But we love you. I love you. Just don't drive a fucking car. What no, I'm, I'm drinking, drinking water. Anyways. What, what I'm drinking is uh uh I'm drinking uh birdsong brew from Charlotte, North Carolina. Honey it's pie. Honey pie double IPA. Ugh. I like it. It's not is too it honey, honey forward. It's not honey forward, no. Is there graham cracker? No, not graham cracker. And overall, I would be very disappointed. Hang on one second. Let me sip test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go. go. Pardon me? What's honey forward? Like, so forward is going to be the first taste that you pick up on your palate. Honey is more like in the back here. I'm fine with that, actually. Yeah, it's it's hot first because it's a double IP. And when you you taste it, like at the middle, you could say that, or at the end, like it's got this on the end. It feels like I'm, Ah. it feels like it, like it hits you with bitterness and then you kind of like chase it with honey. Here's the thing, Rose. That's good. You're, the, how you taste and how you experience any delicious liquid or food, it, it, it's entirely subjective. So whatever you're saying is not incorrect unless you're doing a wine tasting, <laughs> which I have found out when I'm doing a wine tasting. I'm like, wow, this tastes like gummy bears. And they just look at me like I'm a fucking idiot, <laughs> which isn't wrong. So we have some fun things to talk about today. Oh, yeah. yeah. Speaking of um, drinking... And going into like fun things. What have we been playing lately? Uh, I got. I didn't oh, tell did you. We, did, we, did we talk about what we played earlier? We did. We did. We did we okay. Okay. Sorry. We I got two tell takes. You. I'm getting confused. We started I, talking about it, but I want to talk about how that round went. I I I didn't tell you guys this. I picked up um, Pokemon Snap again. Woo! Good. Do they add more stuff? They to add, No one told me anything. No, I got no updates. I follow so many Pokemon outlets. Continue. I, but I apologize. like, I would, they added some more courses and more things you can do. Yo, oh, I wait, started playing that what, what? It's so good. What but courses? Like, oh, well, a lot of them are just New like... New levels or additional levels on pre-existing levels? Because I'm down for like, both. Like new levels. And one of them that is kind of like the other. The one that I really like that really took me off guard. Here's a level where you shrink down... <gasps> Yeah, I got that too. You got that? It's like a straight up honey I shrunk the kids situation. Yes. Let him continue. Continue. Oh no, that's pretty much it. Like no, your no, small are there? bugs. There's a lot of big bugs. bugs. Birds bugs. are scary as shit. They're, yeah. Are they big? They're yes, big. They're huge. Well, you're small, which makes them big. Like scary big. Oh, like they're gonna big. take this. What if they can make you really big? But then, but all the Pokemon but would I mean, be small. That's not- how would that translate to the islands, though? If I'm small. big, Pokemon small. But Waylords if he's small, Pokemon small. big. Waylords you are think small. We're Fucking the mammoth, mammoths are small or whatever. No, I got that prompt. Like, mm. I, I got that prompt and I started it. I oh haven't my God. finished it yet. When you guys leave, it's... I'm going to play a level. Oh, I got to play it. Yeah, I got to play it. But, but yeah. I also, I, I picked up Hades again. 
I haven't played Hades. I, I remember that was on my list. Well, it's a slap. It's I will eventually of, buy it because I know you love it. I love but... it. I love it for the Greek mythology. I love it because I also, when like, I really need to let off some steam, I just go <laughs> on a on like in Assassin's Creed. I just go on a full on like murderous rampage. Yeah, that's normal. Oh, and that's what Hades Rose. is for. That, yeah, yeah, let me Hades introduce is. you to Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> Oh, I that's exactly like what that's for. Like. Have, have you played, played the fifth GTA one? GTA Five. I don't like it. What? what? Like, what if I get? What if I play the campaign up until we get to Trevor Phillips and then let you play? Oh, you. That would, might be better. You would fuck around. That might be better. Phillips. I think. That, that Trevor might Phillips. Be better. I don't know what it is like if they like purposely do the psychology. When you play Trevor, you wanna like really fuck shit up. So Trevor Phillips is the embodiment of the soul chaos. of Grand Theft Auto. He, chaos, absolute chaos. He is a mm. literal representation of the chaos that most players want to just inflict upon the world. I actually have a fun transition. I was uh, over our little uh, mini lockdown. I started watching the show Snowpiercer. Oh, yes. yeah. they have a show about Snowpiercer? Yeah, they got a show with uh, Davey Diggs as the lead. Is it better yes. than the movie? Yes. I would imagine it would be because the, a, a, but, uh, a concept like Snowpiercer needs more world have building. Have you seen the anime? There's an anime? There's an anime. There is an anime that's Me and Brian like... are like, we're done. I didn't know there was an anime. <laughs> we're leaving now to go but, watch uh, it. But one of the characters in Snowpiercer, I forget who it was, it's like a very, like, uh, very uh, shithead, like, police guy, is actually played by the guy who is Trevor Phillips. Yeah, he's in a ton of stuff. He's he sounds in... exactly the same, and he plays a very similar he character. He looks a lot like him, too. He's in The Walking Dead, also. Like, he's in stuff. I gave up on Walking Dead a while ago. We all have, but <laughs> nevertheless. That's the name of the anime. So, the anime that so I... Snowpiercer reminds me of is basically you're on a train, and it's humanity's last oh, hope. I've, I've heard I, I, Iron Fortress brings it Iron about. Fortress. It's like something of the Iron Fortress. Mm -hmm. It's such a good anime. I watched the entire thing. It's great. But that's a good show. Also, there's a uh, season two of Snowpiercer has uh, uh, Sean Bean in it. Sean Penn? Yeah. Sean Bean? Sean Penn? Sean, Sean, Sean Penn. Bean's Game of Thrones. Sean Penn is Mystic River. Oh, okay. So Sean oh, okay. I, I, yeah. I always thought that was the same guy. I got that confused. No, but Sean Bean. Sean Bean, Ed Sean Stark. Bean's, yeah, Ed Stark. He's there being like a millionaire villain guy. And he's fun. He's got a face for both. He can do whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. So I know we did our little uh, mini update last week, but I was out of work all week last week. And instead of doing things that are productive, like catching up on what we need to watch for this podcast, <laughs> all I did for four days was play Tropico. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I fucking did. I was a Cuban dictator for four days. Is, so is it like a Sims kind of game? Like a it's make a like city? um, it's like Sim City. Okay, but, but with more power. Well, with an it's iron got it's a, what's good about Tropico, and if you like the Sim City games, uh, listeners out there, any management resource game, you will love Tropico. It has a sense of humor to it. Like it's it's really fucking funny. Like, it doesn't take itself too seriously, but it ultimately is a resource management and political game. You also, um, it also has one of the best fucking soundtracks of any game I've ever played. Love a good soundtrack. Yeah, oh, mm -hmm. it's it's like bomb Cuban music constantly. Sweet. Yeah, it's really great. And did, you, are, did you watch Attack on Titan? Oh, I did watch Attack on Titan. Oh, yeah, Jess. I need I need an update. How did you like it? So I've only watched the first episode so far. I believe we're two Ooh. in now. Two in as of I haven't had time. I've been very busy Bruh. playing it's, Tropico. It starts very strong, but we haven't gotten to anything too juicy yet. Okay, Which is good, so but I'm not upset that I missed the second episode so far. Did you I'll really think Levi well. was dead? No, Levi's not dead. He's fine. He's just exploded. Yeah, I, you know, I he exploded. He exploded. He exploded. He's fine. Just, Wait, <laughs> I don't want to spend too much time getting into it because uh, I I would halfway through the season like to do an update on where we think it's actually going to end, mm -hmm. which I, I do think we should do. But <laughs> um, Levi caught Zeke. If, as you remember, Rose Zeke is the Beast Titan. Mm -hmm. Big monkey. Um, it's like what Brody told me at the end of the first half of the fourth season, um, Zeke had put his spinal fluid in wine meant for the higher ups in the military, which is, which actually Brody, I, I do want to mention that I didn't, I think it's funny that it's worked so well in his favor because he never in, intent, intended for the scout troops to consume it. I think like it just goes back to the fact the 
the premise of the show is just like human beings are kind of shitty. Yeah. Where it's, where it's like everyone has to get their hands on this this cool wine. That, that yeah, you're, even the people who don't really need it, or the people who are are not going to drink it responsibly, they're chugging that shit down. Yeah, I, I I just I just really love that where it worked out so well in Zeke's favor, but it was never his intention to be imprisoned by the scouts in the way that he was and then him the, then bring the wine and then drink it and then actually Levi a the, to begin with having a moment of weakness where he wants to give his men a, a moment of joy mm-hmm. uh which is unlike Levi entirely no, he's, very he's a very strict. regimed and strict person in, in a good way your boy it, he blew up. Yeah, and it's not fair. Oh, yeah. He's fine. <laughs> okay. so Look, he they're, just... they're only saying that because I'm considering adding him to my anime boyfriend leg <laughs> tattoo. Leg. Yeah. You should. Right next to L. I'm, yeah. Oh, L. We don't even need to start. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you know, you know. If you don't, don't If worry. you don't, I can't Learn. explain it to you. Really my mom, really when I showed her the tattoo, Googled L, and she was like... <laughs> She was like, so, or I Googled Death Note. She's like, so do you have a tattoo of L or Light? L? Why does he look so sad? <laughs> <laughs> it's the cutest fucking thing in the world. Lord. <laughs> yeah. That's anyways, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> anyways, I'm very excited to see where it goes. Where, where, where we wait, get what we're discussing. I'm wait, sorry. Where are any of the female characters right now? Hold on. The female characters are there. I'm just going to say. The reason L splo- not L, the reason that Levi exploded is because he, he uh, beat all those other Titans, was able to beat Zeke, capture him, and he stuck one of their like torpedo lancers <laughs> inside his stomach so that if, if he decided to change the beast titan, he would explode. Oh, and and with the, would, uh, the, you know the rest. Revert back to pulp that needs to re become no, a human. Absolutely not. If that happened to me. I look at everybody else and say, you know what? Fuck you all. I'm taking you all with me. That was what he did. He did that. If he did that. He yeah. did that. I don't think he really intended to do it, actually. I think he was actually was totally having a, a, a moment of extreme emotion because his mission is such a priority to him. He was trying mm-hmm. to hold on. I would say fuck it all. Regardless. Fuck, position, fuck it, everything. Regardless. I'm taking you Levi all Levi is me. not dead. He's, He's just fine. hurt. Hanji would have never dove into the river with him with his corpse if she thought he was dead. Yeah, no, she would have broken down. If she would have broken down and absolutely something. lost it, like we all would as as an audience. Yeah. Female characters, though, that that's a great um, yeah, thing to bring up the, in general. As you characters. all can, well, you can't gather here. You don't see my face or how <laughs> I represent myself, but. I am a female and I identify as such, and their roles in media have kind of shaped my life in a lot of ways, whether, whether you want to admit it or not. They really do. How you grow up, how you form, what you see as examples of yourself, and the fictional and the real world really do influence you as an individual. Hmm. Agreed? Disagreed? Oh, totally yeah. agreed. Oh, yeah. Thoughts? Um, and real quick, if we're going to bring up strong females, I mean, Mikasa, despite oh, that heart wrenching argument or discussion oh, between her and Aaron, right. which I think, I, I think they're like baiting it as like Armin's like, he's got to be faking. I, I think he is actually faking. Yeah. Um, I, I really do. The soul, but actually the soul of the show, show would be crushed entirely if what all... Aaron was saying was true, but also simultaneously good writing either way. But this one's for the ladies. Like Jess said, there's a lot of like uh, female representation seen in media that really just kind of shapes us and how we think of what the hell? other people. Sorry, I'm still on the How we think time. about women, how we think about their roles in society mm-hmm. and what and what roles they play in our lives. What sort of like how they're visually depicted, how they're supposed to Mentally, act in certain visually, situations. Etiquette, that's a very important thing to and bring it's up. all written by men. For the... Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes. But, um, actually, most of what we're discussing today, give or take, Brody, is probably written by mostly men. A uh, fun fact, though, um, the director of Death Note is a woman. I know. I love that. Yeah. Right, no. But I... yeah, we're we're talking about female. <laughs> we're just... gonna stop talking about men and Attack on Titan. We want to talk about the ladies. Look, yeah. I'm still. On Attack on Titan because I just saw for the very first time the Jaw Titan. I fucking hate it. I'm it, gonna... it is arguably bes- you saw the Cart Titan, which is weird to me that you're more weirded out by this than the Cart Titan. I don't know why, but 
to my brain, the card titan makes far more sense. It, for you, like, yeah, that's functional. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> but the jaw Ergonomically, just, I could use you. Uh, like, half his face is just a jaw to me. And I'm yeah. just like, that's... No. That's why they call him the jaw titan. I hate it. <laughs> what, do you think it would be weird if it was, like, just a regular looking titan? You'd be like, why do they call him the jaw titan? <laughs> What's weirder, huh? He really likes the movie Jaws. All no. right. So I guess overall, um, we have some bullet points laid out for ourselves today. But before we like really jump in to the meat and potatoes that we're going to discuss, um, what makes female representation good and what makes it bad? Which is the ultimate question here and uh, oh. examples we will display. Oh, it's, yeah. a, it's a loaded a, question. That is a loaded question. Yeah. This is I, the void of the it's, internet. It's, I know. it's bigger than us, really. Like, it really is. Before we delve too deep into the subject, I, I want to note for those out there that are maybe irritated we're just focusing on women i i don't think i i do i do we will do a male version too i think there are toxic and bad representation of men in media as well as good both are both are needed to craft a a productive and good narrative but sometimes it goes too far to where it's not doing anything productive for anybody and it's only negative for young minds yeah I just Which is what I would say. Completely off topic, Brody. Feel free. To You're good. Say. But the okay. husband for um, Full Metal Alchemist, their te- like Edward the Elric's teacher's husband. Oh. Grady! That's a hell of a man. Um, the He's Elric little... brothers in general are nothing Elric but was... an amazing representation of how young men should behave. Yes. yes. Yeah. No, <laughs> we're, we're already jumping into the men, but you brought that up, and I just have to I say, if my up. sons ended up like Edward or Al- Alphonse, I would be so proud of them. Yes! Yeah. So pretty. proud. So Golden like, boys, literally <laughs> and figuratively, all the way through. But I'm just trying to think like of like what really kind of sticks out is like a bad representation. Oh, actually, we didn't we we didn't have a lot of like brainstorming all of the drinking earlier. But do you remember the shortly lived Pamela Anderson show on network TV called uh, Stacked? What's Stacked? Stacked. Um, yeah. she was a librarian with giant boobs. That is that the whole show? That, that was, was the, the show. show. The Man Show also existed. Come on. <laughs> With yeah. the, what were the jumping ladies on trampolines called in the man show? Hot? Uh, well, they were hot. <laughs> that, that's not the point. Yeah, but that's like tox. That, that's toxic. That's a little toxic. Yeah, the man show was... Uh, and now, as you can reflect, it is entirely negative. Because if the same, same show at the time existed from a female perspective... It, would it wouldn't have get been. a lot of hate mail. Oh, absolutely. I... I think, like, in retrospect, I can appreciate the man show as, like, almost kind of comedic in, like, what it a man's It is comedic is. and it's satirical, but I definitely did not pick up on that until I was much older. But and I, and I want to say right now, like, for me as a person, the man show didn't offend me. And I do mm-hmm. like Jimmy Kimmel a lot as a comedian and as a late night show host. He's one of the best. I don't know what Adam Carolla is doing now. I think he has a podcast. But for young minds, stuff like the Man Show is a little misdirected. Well, yeah, really. I think it's I, like letting your ten-year-old play Grand Theft Auto yeah. without any context. I know we said like <laughs> we're gonna talk about women, and we've only talked about men. Oh God damn it! You're right. <laughs> you're fucking right. I just have one last <laughs> point for this. So, we're only thirty minutes no, in. I we're gonna spend right. the next hour and a half talking about the ladies. No, but we're talking about like what our ideal of like toxic. And I can only think of it. Right. Is the first toxic representation. I should yeah, say. the first thing that really came to me personally was sort of like characters who are made only for the sake of male gaze. <laughs> so, oh, so are one? we gonna uh, choose today about... to talk about manic pixie dream girls? Ooh, that's Ooh. another one that's kind of insane. Because if thing. we're gonna delve into our generation psyche and what effect females and media have had on yeah. them, the manic pixie dream girl. Has made and Barbie. crushed the sexual Barbie? fantasy. Oh yeah. Barbie. Have you men. seen? Have you seen the picture of people who are like having tons of plastic surgery to actually look like Barbie? I yeah. Have. Terrifying. Apparently, if Barbie was a real person, she'd have a ten-inch waist and be six foot tall. That's. Can you stop? And like two like ribs, that? actually. That's a nightmare. That's... And there was one person. There was one doll company, a third-party doll company, who actually tried to make like a proportionally correct 
like kind of like a Barbie doll esque like I hear mm-hmm. proportionally correct so little girls would grow up I am with gonna Barbie. play devil's advocate a little bit here but with that and then Barbie stomped it out and say that like, oh well we can't have competition so you're well, Mattel, you're like Mattel is Mattel you know? mm. you're um your positivity and body body positive figure can't be sold. Okay. Because that, that stops on Barbie's property. We're going to get into a whole other thing here, yeah, and I do I'm not want to like, do that. Barbie but I do is. think the whole body positivity and self-help movement has gone way too far <laughs> in this culture. Oh, oh, yeah, I, yeah. No, and I absolutely do. You do not have to be constantly working on yourself and no. improving your mental health and your diet and your fitness to be a good self-actualized person. I'm no, fucking really sorry, don't. but you don't. Sometimes it, you just gotta take a break. You, yeah, it, really. you can take a break for as long as you fucking want to. It is your life. And, and I, 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 I think it's because I've just been on Instagram more than I usually am because I've been off work. I'm so fucking sick of it. Mm. Not everybody is beautiful. Everybody is valid and worthwhile, 100%. 100%. Everybody is not beautiful, and that doesn't fucking matter. And you don't have to feel beautiful all the time. That also doesn't matter. I am so sick of this shit. And, and to me, that's toxic too. Mm-hmm. Well, you telling me I gotta work on my oh, mental Instagram shit? Yeah. yeah, I gotta work on my mental health Twitter and body help. image all the time? Fuck that. Like, <laughs> I don't have to do shit. No. No, I'm so sick of it. That's another thing we project on the women that I just can't stand. I and it is so prevalent with so many of my friends. And it just makes no sense to me. You don't have to live by anybody's rules at all. I like the idea of what you're describing as like the sort of like perfect life Instagram that a lot of women have. And I'm just reminded right. of like when you were having... When we were playing Mario Party and you showed me your Snapchat. And it's like, I'm a bowl of cereal. And you had like, <laughs> and you had like a filter. And you had your face on like an old man in a speedo's body. And it's just like, yeah, that's real. That's, that's real. real. I like that way more than like the fake, <laughs> fake perfect lifestyle. Yeah, right? the fake perfect lifestyle. And I send my friends uh, filters of me as a bowl of cereal saying to me in the morning. We send them back. Yeah. You no, I agree with you, Brody. The I absurdity is that. where it's at. You don't have to be a cookie. If that's you want, but here's person. the thing. If you want to work on those things, that's beautiful. It'll make you feel good. But you don't need to feel like shit about yourself because you don't want to do any of those things. It and, doesn't it doesn't matter. And you can't yeah. really compare yourself to people on Instagram or the people you see on movies. Right, because they're just not they like have their tits taped oh my and shoved with chicken cutlets and six pairs of spanks on <laughs> yep. and editing and everything I just said everything is one hundred percent true. And you know what no, the perfect is. example of that is? Hmm. Uh, any James Bond movie from Pussy the old galore. days. Pussy. There's a woman named Pussy Galore. Was that Goldfinger? I. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Somehow that worked. <laughs> It did. I, I, was, I was saying pussy galore, so don't say um, my okay, head's in the Okay, but can we also, as a jumping off point, um, you're going to say the bad, and I'm going to say the good is the Austin Powers. <laughs> <laughs> the, the a lot of vaginas <laughs> of the world. Well, that's another thing. It's just Dixie. like they're making fun of it. Dixie Normus. Uh, I gotta love Dixie Normus. You gotta the, love Dixie the Normus. The fucking Bart Simpson name, kind of. Yeah, they are, like Colin Moe's. <laughs> The classic ICUP. Mm-hmm. There's obviously funnier ones. But, like, but a lot of that is just, like, first. very male gaze. And for people who don't really have, like, a good idea of it, the way I've always kind of understood it was just this character isn't really for any sort of plot purpose as much as it is just I'm here for, for the... For the male gaze I'm of the sure. camera. Which yes. I, I want to add in general, um, I don't have a problem with. But when it becomes prevalent... And it becomes the when you're the majority able to see through it. it kind exactly of when it's not um, when it doesn't pertain to the protagonist or the vibe of the show. It when it feels like ham fisted in. No pun intended. Ham fisted in. You know it. It just comes off really phony. And and um, another point you you keep bringing up the male gaze, which is usually what how we view most media. There. are more women are directing major motion pictures and shows now more than ever. So we are taking a step back from that. Eternals is out now, so we have no excuse not to watch it. Oh, Um, yeah. Fun fact, guys. I have an excuse. I don't want to. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't either. Uh, I'm, I'm we, a woman to... did not even win an Academy Award for Best Director until Catherine Bigelow won the Oscar for The Hurt Locker. Really? Her, yes. Oh, wow. And you know what's fun about that what? is um, who else was running that same year was James Cameron for Avatar. And that's his ex-wife, Catherine Bigelow. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, go Catherine Bigelow. Hurt Locker is fucking badass and totally masculine and such a raw, energetic movie. And just, you fucking killed it, bitch. <laughs> can, I, can I also just sidegress? Avatar sucks. Okay, yeah, I, I saw it for the first time you on know an LSD, so are you I really about, liked are you it. Are talking about Avatar The Last Airbender? I feel like you both did it. I'm talking about the one that I've sucks. Said. Are you talking about the last? The blue Avatar people, people one sucks. Well, well, so those who are really listening good. to me, we're going to play it. It just doesn't stick. So we touched, I I would say, vaguely on what we feel like bad representation of women in media (laughs) Mm -hmm. is, and and pretty much I think what we're all touching on is over-sexualization is an issue that most of us have. Yeah, hollow over-sexualization that's just kind of there to stare at the boobs of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do we have, I'm trying to think right now, and I, I, do we have any examples of women in media that are like, Boy obsessed. I feel like oh Bella, Bella from Twilight. Okay, <sighs> I have very mixed emotions about this. I fucking hate Twilight. With can you passion. can you tell me real quick what you don't like about Bella, and I will respond. I mean, okay, so this guy, she moves Which in one? with her dad, right? Edward, so Ed, Ed, Charlie Swan, Ed, Edward, Edward the the vampire. She moves in with her dad for the very first time. She goes to school and she meets the Collins. And she's like, she doesn't even know the guy for a day. And she's already fucking obsessed with him. Yeah, but that's how crushes work when you're in high school. Uh, this may be also me just being the aromantic idiot. No, have, your, your like, perspective is important and we want to hear this. But then she becomes obsessed with this guy, right? And then he starts stalking her and she's totally fucking fine with it. That's not how it happens. Yeah. He basically goes, oh, I love you, like, I hate, I hate Twilight, but that's not the story. Well, it's not that I hate no, Twilight, I just like, haven't I'm seen it. I'm watching you, hold on. He's like, I'm watching you while you sleep. And she's like, oh, that's fine. In high school, okay. in high school, like, any girl how, would be so down with that. Be like, oh my god, that's so quirky. And how stalkerish is that? Um, side note, guys, I do have two Twilight board games for the first movie and the second movie that we're gifted to me <laughs> recently. So if we want to do a game night, we can invite our we friend totally uh, D over do it. and do it. Um, Shit, why not? do some Twilight game night and get uh, and drink some beers and play Twilight. And she like knows, and then he's like, oh, well, we can't be together because I'm a vampire. And she figures out that she, he's a vampire and is like, okay, fine. Like vampire romance, whatever. Then he goes out and he's like, oh, well, we can't be together. You should be with the werewolves. And she's like, bitch, I just fucking told you so, I want to be with you, not the, the werewolves. This is like a people. really overgeneralization. I'm not saying it's wrong, but it's like, <laughs> it's not accurate. <laughs> also, can we, the main <laughs> vampire character, doesn't he like see Bella's daughter? It's just like, oh, I'm in love with that baby. Uh, That's Jacob. That's yeah. Jacob. Do we want to talk about imprinting? Yeah. Wait. Oh, okay. No. Let's, I'm gonna tell. I'm, I'm just gonna just say really quick what imprinting is, and then we're gonna move weird. on because I do want to do a Twilight episode. It's just weird to me. I don't like it for the very fact okay. that she like sees a bunch of red flags from a mile away. You can't see red she flags and rose colored glasses. Out. She even mm-hmm. points them out. She's like, "Oh, I know this is weird or this is strange." Blah blah blah. I don't care. I'm like, "Bitch, how do you Damn. not fucking care?" It's called lust. Ugh. <laughs> Okay, so really quickly to talk about imprinting. Oh, imprinting she's... is not um, overtly a sexual connection to somebody. No, it is it's just a, a um, either a father figure or an uncle figure or a brother figure, whatever figure you Familiar need to be figure. in that person's life to take care of them and make sure they're okay. You will fulfill it. Obviously, the connotation is very sexual, though, throughout the movies and the books. All right, so we've touched on the, no, well, what we think is negative. And I, I just want to say that I don't think Bella is overtly negative, but I don't think she's actually that great either. <laughs> so I'm not wrong, but I'm not correct. I, I no, will, it's your opinion. She's a very C-minus representation. Yeah, she has she's no personality. Like, Bella is just, is just a place for the female reader or male, whatever you're into, 
to put yourself onto that character. I'm She's sure blame there's a gay character. version of this. Yeah, Twilight would work better gay, but we don't need to talk about that. <laughs> Um, Rose, okay, so we did uh, really say this, but we're talking about what our favorite representations of women are in modern media. Yeah. Right. It's a big task to discuss. And we've got... And we're going to try and do it in, like, 40 to 50 minutes. So strap in. So we we have some honorable mentions. Yeah, strap in. Buckle your seatbelts. But we'll we'll talk and expand on some of our, like, top three favorites. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. But just... You know, anyone want to do an honorable mention, like five honorable mentions right off the bat? Um, because I've got a few. Why don't you start? You first. start, yeah. Well, um, oh shit, you got a list. Yeah, I have Rose name. made a list. Me and Brody are like, what? Whole, we want to get another beer. Like a whole piece of paper of names. Jeez. Yeah, you uh, go and I'll follow. So, Kim Possible, Harley Quinn, Ellen Ripley. Uh, yeah, Ellen Diana Ripley. Fuck yeah. From. Wonder, Wonder Woman, Woman. Mm. Riza from Full Metal Alchemist, Claudia yeah. from Assassin's Creed, and then um, there was also. Hold on. You know what? I'm going to add to the, the honorable mention list. Go ahead. And you guys might disagree with me and are, are definitely going to say, Ooh, like, wow, you're just biased. But I actually think Misa Misa, despite Misa, her love yes. her love girliness, that's just she's just a lovable person. That's what just who is she is. Misa from? Uh, Death Note. Death Note. Oh. Misa yeah. Amane, a actually very intelligent and capable woman and just knows what but she she's wants. she's just underrated, though. She is really she's underrated. She's so underrated. Thank you. I couldn't agree more. I, 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 I think she's so underrated. She's the person who... She's so multifaceted and... Like, she found off. out, like, the mystery of... So yeah, she basically, right? not only did she find out she that found Light, out who Light was, she's mm-hmm. been talking with the police, she was initiating attacks on her own, and, and she's not as intelligent as Light, because it's about Light and L clashing heads. But the thing but is, she's she also, pretty damn close in a lot of regards. Yeah. She also, Light was it was not going to fucking take this deal, but to get she, a pair of Shin Gami eyes, you can cut your lifespan in half. Side note is, though. She had more life added onto her as after that Shinigami died to yeah. protect her. Mm. So yeah. her lifespan was already extended. Yeah. So she cut her lifespan in half to take a deal that Light was too cowardly to take. Because he's just a fucking coward. He's, he's a narcissist. A, he's a narcissist. He's a narcissist. He, he was he was so. like, Oh, I can cut my half lifespan in half to see how long everybody else has. And to see now. their true names about and, their heads. And to mm. see their true names. So Misa was like, I'll fucking take it. Thank you, please, and thank you. She did it twice and got her life, like, her life decreased extended. twice. Yeah, she, she got uh, it, de- like, decreased twice, but then she did it, but she did get her life extended. She did get it extended overall, so it, it's not really important how long it was extended and cut in general. It, it just knows that she was willing to take the sacrifice and have the balls. But, like, ultimately, I think as far as... Uh, female representation in anime goes. She she's one of my favorites. She, like she really is. Lisa is also one of my favorites as well. Yeah, yeah, she's wonderful. Mm. Uh, great There's sense a of great of... sense of fashion. It uses her sexuality, but not in a um what could be preser- uh perceived as slutty, which I don't agree with, but I, I'm just gonna say it. And um she uh she knows what she fucking wants, right? And yeah. she gets it. And they're like, we were talking about it a little bit, and it's like a huge can of worms, and like, we're mostly coming at it from like the Western perspective, but anime in general doesn't really do too well with uh, female characters. I was telling yeah. you, uh, yeah. I started watching Assassination Classroom, and one of the characters, they just, their nickname is just a bitch. It's like it started as Professor Bitch, and now maybe. it's just she's a bitch. Yeah, she yeah. Is more- I, I we didn't want to bring up too many anime characters, even though I know uh, me and Brody in particular consume a ton of anime. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, we didn't because I, I feel like they're all just cultural differences that aren't going to translate well, and ultimately it is cartoons, and we cannot use cartoon performances as a basis yeah, I have, for a representation of I actual of, women. I thought of a real person who. I really want to do an honorable mention for uh, as ever since she died. How much Betty White clips have y'all Betty been watching? White. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Brody. I don't even know why that I didn't think, occur to I us think earlier. I, we didn't really get the chance to do it because we were off a while and the timing isn't real. But like that, that well, hurt. that woman, she was supposed to outlive us all. Yep. She wanted to make she, our twenty twenty two better. Mm. She is the new. Um, 
But like I just uh, I saw the when she died the uh, SNL where she she was on. Yes. Do you remember yes. the sketch? Oh we discussed this a few weeks ago. Me sketch? and my husband watched it recently. The sketch together. where it's like her with the muffin. Yeah. It's the NPR classic NPR yep. skit that it's SNL. It's Dusty's does. muffin. Yeah. It's a Dusty muffin. Is there a cherry in this muffin? Oh, there hasn't been a cherry in my muffin since 1928. Yep. I love her so much. I only uh, aspire to wit. live as long and as great Prosperous. as Betty White did with as many animals and as many loves. And um, I hope to maintain my sense of uh, fashion and humor as she has. And it's another kind of oh like inspiring God, she's thing. She's a wonderful person. It's, an, it's an inspiring was, because yeah. it's like... Everyone loved her. She said like within, like in her old age is when she started doing the most work. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I'm a guy who doesn't know when he's going to do his best work in his life. And it's like, hey, maybe it'll be when I'm 90. No one does. No, and no also, one. you having said that, I, I think in general, a lot of women fear that they they won't, especially in the entertainment industry, find oh, yeah. work after 30 or 40. 30 oh, it's not, such a real 30 thing. 30 not fair to say yeah. because I'm 32 and I look 27. But... When, when you hit your late 30s to your 40s, you, you don't know what roles you're going to play. And, mm-hmm. But things are progressing. There are roles being written for old, written for older women. Yeah. Like yeah. I, I Usually just, better dramatic roles. I agree. Yeah. I just watched uh, Maggie Gyllenhaal's new movie with Olivia Coleman. Um, I fucking forgot the name, but it's really good. I... Uh, those stories need to be told. They are just as important, but it's such and, and they're a real just thing. as fucking good. But it's such a real thing for like women in Hollywood to be like not wanting to share their age because they know, like, there's a certain You're, cut point. Yeah, you know? because thirty five year olds are being cast as forty five year old mothers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, I think it, even it, Betty White, she was like middle aged and playing elderly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh-huh. it happens to all of them. Hmm. Um, so we've touched on the bad and we might bring up, we'll bring up more honorable mentions as we're rolling through and bad points as they come to us. But we're going to start off with uh, Rose here. Rose yeah. has three examples of good representation of women in media to them. What are they? All right. So I've got three. One might surprise you, but I've got Pepper Potts, Sally Jackson, and Miss Frizzle. I, I love that you added Miss Frizzle. <laughs> I on love Miss Frizzle. I wasn't thinking about it. So I was at the bar one night and I was asking everybody, all the staff members, who is your top three favorite oh, did you write female? Them down? I didn't write all of them down. Do you know who came up with Miss Frizzle? The, our teacher. She works as a teacher with special kids. Yeah, special yeah, kids. she's a teacher. She's amazing. So I'm like, she's wonderful. I'm like, hey guys, who's your top three favorite female representation? And right off the bat, one of my coworkers goes, Miss Frizzle. I yeah. stopped, I froze, I'm like, holy shit. That's such a good answer. That is, is one of the best answers. That's because she's thought about it. It's just no nothing like we talked about, no problematic behavior, no Not the old or, sexualization. The original, the OG. Ms. Just Frizzle. a woman who wants to teach. And, and wear really cool dresses. Hell yeah. yeah. And she just does it so well, too. Like, I, I grew up with Miss Frizzle. I grew up, like, when you really stop to think about it, Miss Frizzle is an incredible role model for positive, like, female representation. Because she not only is good at, like, just being a cartoon character and being able to trans be translated, like, the lessons that she wants to teach to kids being translated in such a informative way she also does math science and history yeah elementary like, school teachers uh, they used to do everything yeah they yeah. used to have just one teacher for everything and you know we don't really see that anymore but well, that's no, and you such shouldn't. a Everybody good should be dynamic specialties. to have though and it's such a positive role model for little girls to see oh here's you know this female teacher really good at math and science. I also say it's really good for adults to just see someone who does their job, does it well, and owns it, you know? Yeah, and enjoys it. It's not just good for little girls, though, too. It's good for little boys to see. As well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like teaching, it's like showing how representation also matters because her classroom is so diverse. Like, the students, if you pay attention to who her students are, one of the kids is being raised by their grandparents. It's never outright... I don't remember the name of the kid. Yeah, I don't remember. Was it either. Arnold? No, it was not Arnold. It wasn't Arnold. But Arnold did kids, have a shit older brother to deal it's, with. Yeah. It's like Arnold never, was my favorite. Here's the thing. It's never explicitly told or explained that, oh, hey, this kid is being raised by their grandparents. But anytime there's this parent-teacher conference, anytime like 
a parent or guardian is needed or is shown on screen, it's always this Bring up grandpa. Gar- it's like grandma or grandpa. Always on screen. And I'm like, that speaks to so many kids mm-hmm. and students in the public school and the fa- system. And like the fact, did they, I'm guessing they never like make a super big oh, deal out of it. You, can, throw, you can throw in for similar vibes and um, honorable mention. Uh, the grandma from Hey Arnold. Yes. Mm, yeah. the one of the best female, one of the best paid uh, pay, uh, matriarchs <laughs> in cartoon history. Yes. The best. And if you want to talk about representation of very uh, fam- familial lives, Hey Arnold. Hey Arnold, yeah, I forgot. That, that. and I, and actually, hey Arnold I, has I think the best and worst. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think I think just like best real, grandma, worst Helga's mom. Yeah, well, Helga's mom's an alcoholic. So it's a lot to unpack. She's yeah. struggling with a lot, but um, Hey Arnold represents all of those things. And actually, me and my husband were talking about it the other day, and we feel like Hey Arnold is actually more of an adult show than it is for kids. Well, it, it just doesn't dumb things down for kids, you know? It's like... You like, don't need to. The whole point They're of the smart. show is that, like, these little kids do have to deal with fucking adult life and all that. They do. In the big city, that's also simultaneously scary, but very beautiful and welcoming. Yeah. Speaking of the big city, let's mm-hmm. bounce back to the second name I mentioned, Sally Jackson. Who the fuck is Sally Jackson? So, this comes from a book character, Percy Jackson. Sally mm. is Percy's mom. Right. And... She is far stronger than you really. You actually have to stop and think about how. Well, yeah, she fucked is. a god. No, she that. fucked a god, man. She yeah, fucked a, she fucked a god. But here's and thing. not just any god. He like, rocked her like the tides. Poseidon. It was high tide that night. I'll tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> or low knew, tide. All everyone thinks about is, it. She knew who Poseidon was. And the man and who she, made horses. She knew that I'd fuck the man who made horses. Have... Poseidon made horses. Poseidon? Yes. That's right, right? Um, they were made out of sea foam, and then sea he's just like, boom, horses like are here now. Wasn't yeah. Aphrodite made of sea foam, too? <clears throat> yes. But that, the, yeah, Aphrodite's the, a horse. No, how Aphrodite came from sea foam. Well, she's like, made of foam. horse material. <laughs> she, she came from sea foam. It's a whole different thing. Percy can't talk to horses, though. Fun fact. That's Aww. cool. Uh, anyways, Sally not only Sounds like Harry Potter, but it's cool. I recognize that her son was going to have like a very difficult life because he's ADHD dyslexic. Mm-hmm. He has like so he has learning disabilities, but he's also going to be hunted down by monsters. So she marries an abusive piece of shit. Greg was his name. Uh, was Gabe. Gabe. Smelly Gabe. <laughs> Smelly Gabe. <laughs> she Stinky marries Gabe. this abusive piece of shit. Who like em- like mentally and emotionally abuses them? It's also yeah. kind of implied that he physically abuses both Sally and Percy to some extent. Oh, it's... but she has like passive aggressive ways to jab back at him. Right. And at the very end of the first book, where Percy like cuts off Medusa's head, mm-hmm. he sends it to his mom, and his mom like decides. To turn her, her husband into stone? I remember me if I'm right, but in the books, doesn't good, she actually sell the statue her. and yeah, make does. a bunch of money? She does. Because not only does she, like, sell... <laughs> I'm sorry, I just she thought sold, about... She <laughs> sold her husband's corpse No, it doesn't. Not, for not just money. her husband. Not just her husband. It's the entire poker oh, table. Oh, the whole poker table. It's the whole poker table. Like, like Arrested her. Development. Yeah, it's like... Her shit and Lucille husband. is going through that hormone treatment or whatever, and she's listening to like a story on TV about a woman killing her husband to death, and she's eating a cupcake, and she's unwrapping Ooh, it. She just goes, "Good for her." That's another, <laughs> can I just say on, another honorable mention? Yes! Lucille Blue. Oh, and Jessica, what's her last name? Jessica Walters. Who recently? Oh, who recently may she passed? rest in peace. Okay, Lucille Blue, but also Mallory Archer. Oh, uh, <laughs> just like the just just like the. I just, the person who Rose, does not I am give so a sorry fuck. to interrupt. No, it's fine. But I, Jessica I like Walter this. deserves so much more than mm-hmm. she ever got in her living life for my, her comedic performances. You know, my favorite line ever was from Arrested Development in general. There's so many. Like, she was my favorite. It's just like when they had like Anya on there, it's like, here's $10. Go see a Star War. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That, that and sits how, in my brain she was so such a well. better mother to Anyang than she was to Buster. At oh, all and it general. made Buster so mad. <laughs> yeah. So, like, oh my god. I just had to get that out. No, 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 no. I just heard myself like, just, just, "Good for her," and it's like I can't not miss mention Lucille Bluth so, when I say that. No, I'll have like, a vodka tonic, mom. It's cr- mom. It's breakfast. All right, vodka tonic and some toast. Yes. <laughs> so, 
Sally, not only does she, like, protect her son, Percy, as much as she can, she knew what she was getting into when she oh, married absolutely. Gabe. She absolutely knew. She's like, When she I, just decided to fuck Poseidon? No, she married, so she fucks Poseidon, has Percy, and as a way to protect Percy because of, like, how bad Gabe smelled. Yeah, it's like the, the human scent. It's the human scent. That covered, like, Percy oh. until he was, like, 13 years old. Mm-hmm. That's cool. I like that, actually. And she's like, I know my son is going to have a shit time with this, so I'm going to basically find the smelliest person I can. <laughs> just, I just imagine her tinders, like, looking for smelliest man possible. Oh That's why his nickname is Smelly Game. But she also almost fucking dies. Because in, on oh, her no, way... Percy comes home, he gets expelled, and he comes up. She never gets mad at him when he gets expelled. He, she just goes, okay, Percy, take a deep breath, recenter yourself, we'll figure this out. Because mm-hmm. most of the time, she understands that when Percy gets expelled, it's because, like, shit's out of his control. Well, I think the big, like, the big rhetoric of Harry Potter in general. I was going to mention Harry Potter. Did yeah, I just Harry say Harry Potter? Potter? Fuck, Percy Jackson. Percy Jackson. I don't know my books. Uh, you, you do. The big you rhetoric do. of Percy Jackson in general is coming from this very loving place of actually being a parent yeah. of uh, someone with she ADHD is, dyslexia. She is like one of the grade A. It's gotta be frustrating. I know it is on my part. Oh, no. <laughs> but she like recognizes just how frustrated Percy is. Because when you first meet him, he's just like, he's having a shit time at school, his academics aren't very good. He's got, like, one teacher who really believes in him and kind of pushes him to his limits to go, hey, I know you can do this. I know it's hard for you, but I believe in you. And Percy's like, I cannot live up to this pressure. And he goes home, and his mom's just like, honey, I love you regardless. And I understand. Well, at least he didn't get suspended for, like, stealing shit or doing drugs or beating the shit out of somebody. Actually, he kills his teacher, but whatever. Oh, well. She had it coming. She had it coming. Yeah. So... Sally, she almost gets killed the first time Percy goes to Camp Half-Blood for the very first time. And Percy spends the entirety of his fucking quest thinking his mom is dead when she's really not. She's, like, trapped. She's trapped by Hades. Yeah. To be fair, Hades. NBD. <laughs> NBD. Yeah, it's not, it's not a really big deal. He, she, he gives her back. And she just rolls with all of it. So you have to understand, like, her mental and emotional strength, the fact that she didn't fucking break when, like, under the abuse of Gabe, under the expectations that she has a son of Poseidon for the first time in a fucking century, she, like, her son decides to become the, um... And that's Gertrude barking. That's Give Gertie. us one moment. It's a Gertie. But just on the... You were talking about a lot of women who sort of endure a lot of trauma, a lot of people who sort of get who go through situations where they they would sort of get the worst out of them but i'm thinking about a character who's unbreakable damn it it's kimmy schmidt Unbreakable. unbreakable uh generally i was just thinking a lot about like tina fey and all this but the more i thought about it i realized unbreakable kimmy schmidt really is not only Maybe one of my favorite shows ever. It's really good. But also, like, the best... I comp- beat that bitch with the bat. I beat that I bitch, beat with, that the bitch bat. with the bat. <laughs> Sorry, Brody. I, I can't I, vet- change the music industry. Yeah, no. <laughs> it, it, Rose, we'll show you when we're done recording. It's one of the best, like, 20-second clips to get the vibe of a show. Have you actually <laughs> not seen Kimmy Schmidt? You would love it, Highly, highly, think, highly advised. I think you would actually really like, like it. The yeah. jokes per minute... It'll just like, seem off the rails as every Tina Fey uh, sitcom comedy does. More so in this one, because yeah. like, well, okay, let even me just... e- even Thirty Rock comes off as yeah. bizarre until you get adjusted to it. Let me just tell you on like what the major rhetoric is. Yes. Okay. So the premise of the show is Kimmy Schmidt was is from uh, Indiana, was it somewhere? I in believe Indiana. so. Yeah. Somewhere Midwest. She was part of a cult. And um, locked, a religious cult. A religious cult run by an evil reverend and kept hostage in a bunker with other w- women for a couple of years. Then finally came out and went to New York City to start her life. Yep. What the fuck? It's just so dark, right? It reminds me of it's dark. Yeah. It does sound like a Chuck Palahniuk novel. Oh, yeah. But the whole thing is like... 
the show is just like all about Kinney's life trying to get past her trauma and it's very sparkles and rainbows and funny and candy lord and there's there's just so many times where it's like and they'll just usually play it for a joke or so but like the fact that she <coughs> sorry is Jay. going through like actual trauma for what she's been through but at the same time is just like trying to be super optimistic what's for everything. really great about kimmy which I think you would relate to, and a lot of women do, is her adaptability. Yes. Yeah, it, 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 her adaptability. And who's the actress that plays her again? Uh, Ellie Kemper. Ellie Kemper is amazing at oh, playing no one else naivete. No one else can play that better than her. No. It's, like I said... In a like, lot of regards, she is sort of a similar character to what she played in The Office, but amplified. Oh, yeah. Just, like, still very much like the social socially like not getting it kind but of element. But cute and pretty so it, it passes. It, but it's like but but it's better in Kimmy The joke Schmidt. of Kimmy though like production design 10 out of 10. The, or their apartment is what you're thinking of in particular. I'm thinking about right? the apartment and everything that anyone wears. Yeah it's good. Because Kimmy's whole shtick is like she's been. Colorful cardigans. She's been locked in a I bunker. So she has fun. Colorful, color, uh, colorful, colorful cardigans. cardigans. Card Welcome back to Colorful Cardigans with Rose. <laughs> Today wear... we discuss the different weave material in my cardigans in my closet. I do wear a lot of sweaters, so I would not be opposed to a cardigan. Hmm. I'll get you a colorful one. But, I wear tons of cardigans. But They're all mustard. Like she's been in a bunker <laughs> since like middle school age, so she still kind of holds on to that personality-wise. Okay. But it st- very much grows up in time. Alright. And the... Um, Titus. 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 It, thank you. Yeah, I was just going to say that... The, this, is a sh- this is the episode about women, but when we get to Titus. gay representation, Titus... Is... Gay representation can straddle this line for me. Yeah. Uh, Titus. Titus Andromedon is amazing. There's a character named Titus Andromedon, and he's as amazing as you think he is. Yeah, he's fantastic. No. Just watch the show is all I can say. I really highly advise Do it. Do we need to sell Tina Fey more to anybody at this point? I think, like, if you know 30 yes. Rock, if you know SNL, you, you know Tina Fey, and you know she's fantastic. Yeah. Honestly, you can never say that she's, like, there's never enough times that you could say she's fantastic. And, and also you, Mean Girls. Mean, mean Girls, girls. Oh, is, oh, is oh, still yeah. one of my favorite Yo, fucking movies. Um, main actress for Legally Blonde. Reese Weatherspoon. Reese Weatherspoon. Oh, I should have known that. Yeah, actually, no. I've... I I couldn't remember her name. <laughs> Honorable mention right there. Mm-hmm. Elle Woods is what she's Elle saying. Woods. Elle Woods. Elle Woods. one hundred percent amazing representation in terms of she subverts every preconceived notion you have about her. Everybody's like, oh, she's just a dumb blonde, and then she like spouts out some like kick ass, really smart. Like, well, she is she's really smart, like and she does win her first big trial knowing some dumb things that maybe most people wouldn't know. Right? But the laws of hair care do not lie, people. <laughs> okay? <laughs> but like, they just don't. Just, but it all works, though. It doesn't seem cheap. I'm sorry. It's a wonderful movie. Off. And y'all can stop me because I'm the big man talking about this stuff. No, isn't like your interpretation is important. But isn't like the whole reason for women sort of dressing pretty and making themselves look less to get attention from people and more because they like themselves like that? It's the both. Best. It's it's both. I think just as many women dress up I think more women dress up for other women than they do for the male gaze, actually. Hmm. I think when people say I'm dressing for myself, it's like you're really dressing for the gaze and appreciation of the same sex. Because most most women do not dress for the straight male gaze. I can tell you right now. But I've just most never, like, straight men are not going to notice what color lipstick you're wearing, yeah. what kind of shoes you're wearing. Oh my God, that's the newest jean trend. It looks so good on you. They don't notice that stuff. Most women dress well for other women. But I've just known a lot of like people who I've known as like co-workers. And yeah. their usual going out clothes, their style is... A lot of exposure, a lot of makeup, a lot of the face yeah, stickers and stuff, like, a lot of extreme hair, and it's less because they really want the attention of it all, but more because maybe. they know what they look good a lot of, a lot of and people, they know what feels comfortable for them. I always like, equated to makeup. I've had a, I had a lot of friends because uh, I don't wear as And much then she as... gets really mad when men are like, well, if you didn't want that, why'd you dress like that? Because for me, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I have a lot of thoughts on that, but what we're going to get back to makeup real quick. I um 
I used to do hair when I was younger, and um, I used to do a full face every day. I've since calmed down. I don't have the time. But my, I had friends that would bring up this argument to me, like, why are you doing it? Who's it for? And I'm just going to tell you right now. It's for yourself. No, makeup is war paint for the day, baby. Fuck yeah. War yeah, paint. it's yes. war paint for the fucking it. day. And if you don't like it, you can suck my ass. But that's what it is. <laughs> It is war paint for the fucking day. And whatever I got going on is going to tell me what my war paint needs to look like, okay? Either way. I like that. And then just like bringing back to Tina Fey in like 30 Rock is just very much not that. And her version of her being her best self is sweatpants and a big sandwich. Hey! <laughs> God, I mean, yeah. Give me sweatpants, a big sandwich, and plop me in front of whatever uh, <laughs> device I'm playing video games on that day. And that is heaven. Since I was yeah. 10 years old, it, yeah. the key to my heart, buy me a new $20 video game. These days it costs more. And a fucking Quiznos sub, which you can't find these days anyways anymore. Not unless you go to New York. Yeah. Go New York. And go to New York for a Quiznos. <laughs> they're top tier. I and that it. is a beautiful day for me. Yes. Mm -hmm. But um, I think what we're getting at here is women represent themselves for for many different reasons for and for many different reasons throughout the day maybe i dressed in the morning because i have a dress code at work i dressed in the afternoon for my own comfort and for the evening i wanted to impress anyone else who would notice that my clothes were trendy because it's important for me to be considered that way yeah. and i think that's how most women think whether or not they acknowledge or not yeah. and a lot of women do dress for the male gaze and i don't think there's anything wrong with that either i don't think dressing to be sexually attractive is uh, a bad thing most most things that everybody does in this life has to do with the opposite sex or who they're they are sexually attracted to literally everything i'm trying to think of an example of like something that's very much not for you can't you can literally third degree anything back to the basis of your motivation has to do with your sexual drive well, you, I can't tell you how many men think women look nice in hoodies. I'm not going to lie. Like, they're... Yeah. <laughs> and also, also having said this, uh, there is nothing that someone cannot sexualize about you. Do not adjust your behavior so. It, even the nape of a geisha's neck used to be the most sexualized thing in Japan. Oh, yeah. Yo, you ever yeah. see a girl with really nice teeth? Yeah, nice teeth, nice neck. They used to paint their teeth black with charcoal. Um, bind their feet if you want to go back into Victorian days. It was the, oh, the, 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 the slip the of the binding. ankle. All right, so Kimmy Schmidt. I, I think that is such a wonderful example. Oh, I love Kimmy Schmidt so much. Yeah. I'll watch Kimmy that Schmidt, shit and day. then not only is it Kimmy Schmidt, but you got Tina Fey behind her. Yeah. Well, okay, so we talked about one book character. Let's talk a little bit more. Like, we talked about Tina Fey. What about, like, comic books? Comic books are kind of like a weird area, you know? Yeah. They um, are, especially regarding what we were discussing earlier, yeah. at least in anime representation. Yeah. And I always know there's a lot of conflict with the way women... But no, in other like uh, Spider-Man comics, they reintroduce Gwen Stacy as the person who got bit by the radioactive spider instead of Peter Parker. Yeah. And it's still like a very similar storyline. They're both best friends, mm -hmm. except Peter Parker becomes the lizard. So now it's just the very classic Spider-Man story. Wait, of, like the Doctor Lizard from the newest yeah. one? Yeah. yeah. Like I don't like that. Uh, I, for it's Peter. Not, it's not meant to be great. It's not. But it still follows the same storyline as like a lot of Spider-Man things. It's like my friend is now my enemy. I beat them up. She accidentally kills Peter. She tries to save him and she fails. Yeah. and That's okay. Failures happen. Spider-Man really always is just like... Good, because it could really be anyone. I think Stan even said that. Stan yeah. said one of the reasons He's the why everyman. He, mm -hmm. Stan Lee said that one of the reasons why he really loved Spider-Man is because anybody could be under the hood. Like, yeah. it could be behind the mask. And that was part of the point for Spider-Man. And, like, this one in particular, to me, just kind of sticks out because... Spider-Man, however you want to slice it. He's your it. friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. He's the friendly or neighborhood Spider-Man. Yeah, it, it has nothing to do with it's the spider person. race, religion, creed, culture, gender, sex. But like the thing that really is, like, is a solid definition of a spider person to me is someone <laughs> is someone who really wants to just live a normal life and be a superhero but mm -hmm. can't. But no, I think Spider-Gwen's like a really good representation for like 
anyone to read. Um, also good. costume, top tier shit. Oh, good no, costume, no. yeah. Real good. Yo, Very comfy okay. looking. Can I talk about one like fucking detail that I absolutely love? Go on. Her ballet slippers. Yes. It, it like, makes so much sense. Well, she's when you think about arena. like she's a dancer, and you think about Spider-Man like how, is a dancer though. In yeah, Spider-Man too. in general like is they, very agile. The way they move, yeah. very agile, very dancer like. Yeah, but Stet, uh, Gwen and also, have you seen male by ballet dancer bodies? It's Yo. very Spider-Man. They're, they're ripped as shit. They're all just one muscle, Yo. just one. <laughs> And she's a punk rock drummer, which I really I like. Know, oh, that's I cool. Love, love. I like, I like, <laughs> I like that flavor for a character. You know, she, like, she has hobbies and stuff. But yeah. like that, that inclusion though in her costume, like having the ballet slippers. It's like she's not wearing shoes and she's not like going completely barefoot. But because she's used to it, that's something that helps her kind of keep. I don't know. To me, in my interpretation, is that it helps her keep a sense of like. Normalcy. I kind of get what you're saying. It's kind of like the thing that everyone likes about Spider-Man, where it's like it's very much like a homemade grassroots superhero. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's the best way to put it: grassroots superhero. Grassroots superhero. Yeah. Grassroots superhero. One hundred percent. One frame off classic. Grassroots superhero. If we weren't talking about women today, I would say make that our title. Mm. (laughs) Yo. Sorry, I've been flicking off all the caps of my beer cans today. But that's all I gotta say about Spider Gwen. Just she's rad. She's good, amazing. good spider she's person. Yeah, ten yeah, out of ten. Yeah, I agree one hundred percent. I've got some lovely ladies to talk about. Woo, mm-hmm. Hit us with them. All right, so I'm gonna try and move into like least descriptive to most, but who knows where we're gonna end up. So first, I will mention. So when we we initially discussed this topic, um, I, I said in all of media. And I've noticed so far we haven't brought up any video game female protagonist. Honorable mention, Claudia. Yeah, Claudia. Claudia Altidore? Aldore. Uh, Aldore. Not super well known, but those that you know her, love her. Yes, I love her so much. Sadie Adler. Yo. Oh, yeah. Oh. Bro, I've been back I'm not on... talking about Sadie Adler today because I would not be able to do that bitch justice. Mm. But... Just lady turned badass be- better as a cowboy than most cowboys. Yes. Yeah. The ultimate winner of um Red Dead 2. Oh, by far. By oh. far. She got out and She made... had the worst start and the best ending. Yep. Of everyone there. Oh, God. Poor Arthur. I... I, <laughs> I got <laughs> TB. Cried. Two out of three here cried. Doctor say I got TB. <laughs> oh, I my God. It's care. so horrible. And this How is... sad is it that they didn't care that? Like how Arthur's ending went. How dare you? Yeah, my ending was beautiful. There were flowers by my grave, and it was in the sun. Okay, so my <laughs> you're not Lenny. I yeah. Oh my god! Lenny. What? What? Okay, before I start, can we talk <laughs> about that? Is the most original and best scenario in a game? That was so fucking well, funny. Really you, you are get- a shit faced Arthur navigating a bar and beating the shit out of patrons <laughs> trying to find Lenny. Yes! You don't know what's real, you don't know what's fake, yeah. and you have like a 20 second scene to get away from people or you don't escape. And the whole time you're looking for your friend Lenny and you go, Lenny! You need to shout, Lenny! Lenny! <laughs> it's so good! And it's then everyone in the bar is Lenny. Yeah, and then everyone in the bar, their face is shit to Lenny. Lenny, and you look hot today. I, Brody, we gotta commit to next year for us both to replay Red Dead Redemption 2. And oh, I'm playing it now. Fuck are you? Yeah. What part are you on? Uh, I just got the Beaver Creek, the sad part. Oh. Yeah. But who's your favorite? Oh my god, Female Shepherd from Mass Effect. <laughs> and if, if we're going to talk yeah. about overall performance and game experience, a Female Shepherd, absolutely. Can I just like interject with you questions real quick? Yes, lay uh, it on me. I don't know Mass Effect. I you haven't played it. it. I just, but like, isn't the point to be sort of less its own character and more your kind of surrogate character? So that that's what's so beautiful about it is that um, you can view yourself if you want to through the lens of the protagonist. You're you're a genderless character. The reason why female Shepard is the best character ever is is specifically because of the voice actress. Okay. And I oh. should have prepared more, and I did not look her name up. And, I, and that's such a disservice, and I, I do apologize. Oh, wait, then what do you think, if we're doing that, what do you think of Cortana's voice actress? Who's Cortana? Halo? 
Cortana from Halo. I was never a huge Halo bitch. I think so, but like I don't want to say it's a good character just because it's like kind of a submissive role. Jennifer you know? Hale. Jennifer Hale for female shepherd. For female shepherd, my girl. Okay. So then, like, that just kind of brings up another question I have. Since it is sort of a genderless character and you can choose to be male or female, what makes Female Shepherd, like, the way to go? What makes her the move? Multiple reasons. She's just a badass. She's just a badass. And I get what what you're saying because it's, you know, like, oh, you're both the same character, the, um... Uh, the most prolific video game. And I'm not trying actor. to like dog on you. No, 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 no. You know, it just I, sounds like you're no, really. It's, just, it's it, a legitimate question. It just sounds. Yeah, it sounds like there's something about this female version of the character that really that got I'm to me. Mis- yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I think a lot of it. Sorry, I was trying to Google what else Jennifer Hale did, but I'm being asked things I actually have to think about, so I stopped doing it. Um, use I think it has a lot to do with a how good the Mass Effect franchise is in general. Now, whether or not you like the first game, that's on you, man. Uh, It depends on your play style, what you're into, how much do you like lore, how much do you like reading and learning, Um, because that that is really centric in the first game. A rose, you would love it. (laughs) Your rose is sitting there like, yeah, tell me more. (laughs) I've never really been that big into the Mass Effect franchise. The first one is so good. They're all good. Well, I mean, I'm... The fourth one... (laughs) The fourth one is just really. I own it. I. <laughs> I mean, I own it. I bought it. They got my fucking money. I did buy it on sale though, but they fucking got it. Um, it has uh, everything to do with how good the games are, but also everything to do with why does any actor's performance in anything have any effect on you in general? Does that make any sense? Yeah. There is a degree of assertiveness and passion that I've played through at least the first game, both on the male and female perspective, because I don't know, I had a lot of free time. <laughs> and it, 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 last the, time I was male, since this time I'll be female. We all, we all <laughs> yeah, do. yeah. Why, why not? It, the the world is your oyster. It it has everything to do with why is a movie performance poignant or meaningful to you like it, it's the same kind of question it, it has everything to do with um their tone of voice how they're em- emoting emotion all of that and and you feel it with female shepherd she embodies uh strength uh wisdom courageousness and i hate to bring this aspect of the game up but sexuality <laughs> Well, oh no, like that's like everybody a thing. fucks Garrus, okay? <laughs> like, isn't that like a thing in the game where it's like you can fuck the characters? You can if you like, if in you like Dragon Age really... Origin to Alistair. Who doesn't have a man crush on Alistair? I don't know the guy. Well, but... well, replay the games and you absolutely will. Fine. I don't know him either, so I have no clue. Okay, so it has everything to do with. Jennifer Hare, uh, Hale's raw ability to translate emotion just through her vibrating vocal cords. <laughs> it is. It's just a solid performance. Voice acting is still acting, and it's a fucking solid performance. That's true, yeah. Yeah, it's just really good. Moving on mm-hmm. from my video game segues, I am going to mention... What actually spawned my whole idea for us talking about this and uh, o- overall my most favorite female character of all time, uh, Peggy Olsen yep. from <laughs> Mad Men. Mm-hmm. I think she is the pinnacle of good TV writing for female for females in general. I have only seen the first season of Mad Men. Yes. Which you have repeatedly told me that's not enough. No, you gotta keep I going. I believe there's seven. I haven't seen seven. any of it. Seven seasons. There are seven seasons of a TV show called Mad Men. What the fuck is it? Oh my god. Mad Men is very... 1916's, 1960s. Um, Madison Avenue, which is what Mad Men is. Madison Avenue, uh, men that work in advertising. Okay. It is um, known to be one of the most historically accurate shows depicting that era. 
Mm-hmm. It, it has been acclaimed time and time again for its accurate use of, well, etiquette, uh, politics, um, even media, just everything. I mean, they nailed it. It's like a time machine of a show. Yeah. Okay. But if you watch Mad Men, it's 1960s, and specifically looking at Peggy Olsen, it's 1960s women at the workplace. That they've just started acclimating and working in. There are single women living in New York, trying to live their lives that's, and making their own money unmarried. That's really what I've just seen from Peggy in the first season where she's kind of like on the startup. She's working her way up. She started as secretary position, but now is kind of like getting Don's attention and all the other like Who's weird... Not? Don Draper, Don Draper, the, the male, yeah. fa- the main character, the main male He's protagonist. John Hamm's character. John okay. Hamm, the Don Draper. Just a very sexy, passionate man. Yeah, can yeah. sell you on anything. The all the acting all the way around is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Do they end up together? No. Thank God. No, no, no. They, yeah, their relationship. No. Their relationship. Don is married. Might, Thank God. I think they might have kissed at one point. I, 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 Ooh, I, I can't no, remember. I, I take that. I take that back. I don't want it. Yeah, that would have been weird if they ended up. No, I, that that's not... Okay, so the show is, at first glance, just about Don Draper and his life. Um, but really, to me, what the show is about are the women that have shaped Don Draper's life. Because as much as... And, and we're not going to make this all about Don Draper, but his mm-hmm. his childhood and upbringing was sordid. His mother was a prostitute. He grew up in a brothel. Um, you know, in a, in a whorehouse. He grew up in a whorehouse, and brothels too kind for the upbringing that he had. And he uh, went into the military and stole someone's identity of a uh, stole the identity of a man who died or something, and got out of the military. He, you know, so he stole someone else's identity. So Don Usual Draper, life. yeah. So Don Draper Nothing is not ordinary. his real name. Mm. What is his real name? I can't remember. It's Cletus McFetus. It's a bad name. It's not good. It's not as really? good as Don Draper. No. Don Draper. <laughs> Don Draper. It's not Cletus McFetus. <laughs> Don, I don't fucking know that we're talking about. Like, Don Draper's really hard to top in terms of alliteration good name. What I appreciate about Peggy more so than anything and what she's depicted as on a um, major network is uh, she is the anti-woman woman. And that's why I like her. That's why I think she's great. Every norm that you think that a woman should fill, Mm -hmm. Peggy does not fill it at all. And she doesn't fill it really good. But she still succeeds. And she still succeeds. And that's why I like her. Uh, Rose, there's a huge um, plot point in the show where Peggy gains a lot of weight and leaves work for a while and then comes back. No, I love it. No, she got knocked up by one of the men there oh, that okay. she had it that a mutual interest in it wasn't like she was taking advantage of or anything it was a mutual attraction it was a mutual agreement to have intercourse with each other and she ends up pregnant and she decides not to tell him and to um she doesn't really put the baby of adoption her mom and her sister take care of it but she wants no part in it and i um I think at a time when abortion wasn't widely available, this was a choice that she made for her life so that because she knew what she wanted. And there aren't a lot of representation in media of women having to make that hard choice. Especially in the nineteen sixties where it wasn't even like on top of not being available, just like heavily shunned. Exactly, because that they even have scenes like Joan going in to get birth control and stuff where the doctors even razzing her a little bit about it. Just as a warm up, and and Joan deserves this in her own right, but we're not talking about Joan. We're talking about Peggy, mm-hmm. and I, I still I, like that though. I still like that representation. Yes, exactly, because you don't have to fit a cookie cutter cutter mold of what people expect your femininity and your uh, womanness to be. It doesn't matter. The fact that you exist means that you are. Yeah, mm. and that's what I love so much about Peggy. Um. Uh, once again, I, I just, it's such an elegant and wonderful depiction of a woman choosing to negate. Um, I, I don't have any biological drive to do this. Mm-hmm. I don't have any innate maternal instinct. And I have goals that have nothing to do with motherhood. And, and there is no representation of that in modern media, really. Nope. 
Not that I can think of. Nothing as good as this. No, no. no I can't. Th- I, I can't good. think of anything. And, and the best part is, is that she fucking does it. Mm-hmm. She fucking does it. And not only does she achieve what you don't even think she would be able to by the beginning of the show. She um, she also loses the weight. Not that that's fucking important, but she absolutely does. She and she gets her. She did it for her, and she gets a fucking awesome haircut after it, Can okay? Can you just give, me the, just give me the bullet points? What's Peggy like in the beginning of the show? What's Peggy like at the very end? Uh, Docile, exactly what you expect when I say late 1950s female in a workplace. Giddy schoolgirl wanting to please every man around her. Right. A little bit. She she's hesitant. She she makes waves, but like ultimately, she just wants to fit in. She wants to be like everybody else. And then, at the end, she is literally one of like I. She either is partner or about to be partner, working for a company uh, that was. I think they actually they were rivals with, uh, Dawn's company and everybody else, but they merged. She's incredibly successful and in the top ranks in her field. Nice. Writing copy. In- ext- extremely talented. So we get the impact that her growth... Influenced and others was, around how it, her. Like, reflected and influenced everybody else. Especially yeah. the person who gave her... The person, the people, the, her mentor. Yeah, the, her mentor say. and the guy who ultimately was like, she's the one with the ideas. He plucked her from obscurity and saw who she was for who she was and what her potential was and she didn't let him down and in fact she influenced him him. and took care of him and he took care of her they have a very a very very nurturing relationship together so like a mutual respect more than that Mm -hmm. it's a type of intimacy that is not depicted very often between a between platonic men and women yeah i was about to say which can exist like, that, see, to me, seems, like, way better than, like, the usual TV or movie route. Or they end up as sexual partners. Or they partners. end up as yeah. being God, together they or didn't stuff. Do that. No, 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 they don't. And, and um, it okay. just speaks bounds to me from the female perspective in what gaps we have in our ability to love, you know, what kind of relationships we can form with other people. Yeah. And how meaningful and important they can be. Hmm. So Peggy Olsen, guys. I like it. If I haven't convinced you to watch Mad Men now, there's nothing I can fucking do. I like yeah. it. Yeah. There's not. It's amazing. Um, and I'll touch really quickly on my last one, which this is a fucking no brainer. Oh. Um, it's <laughs> definitely Kate, Caitlin Olsen, aka Sweet D from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Oh my god! Like. Yeah. All right. I am picking another woman that represents everything that you do not expect women to represent. I think, like, part of it really is just, like, she is on a show with a bunch of rowdy boys, and she keeps up with them. Uh, I think she does more than keep up with them. At times, she's even more funny than them. Oh, my God. To me, what, what this is, is you have three guys... Who okay. are very talented writers mm-hmm. that needed to bring in a female to the mix, and they wrote Sweet D like a man, and that's why it works, and that's what they do. That they have said it. The reason why um, Caitlin Olsen, in general, her acting chops are amazing, yeah. and she's extremely hilarious. Her comedic timing is it, it, it's out of this world. When you compare her to just like everyone else that's on it's always sunny in philadelphia and how they eventually turn into like these cartoonish characters what would you say like is like the cartoon flex that d as a person represents oh she is unfiltered rage just like (laughs) just like dennis they're they're both unfiltered rage like they really are like she is constantly she's constantly getting shit on and she's angry all the time but my favorite thing about d in that show is like the idea that where it's like it's always about her trying to make things go right and then the second like it's actually going right for her she turns she just like she just like it goes right to her head it's just like now i want you to fail and once again what i love about d is what i love about peggy olsen and they are not stereotypically what you expect out of any (laughs) female character ever like they just aren't 
And that's what's beautiful. And that's what needs to be done more. I want more raunchy women. I want more women that break molds. I want more women that ram their heads into sides of the cars accidentally and leave gigantic dents. I, yeah. <laughs> that was a thing, like a good physical comedy thing. Like she's trying to steal she the shoes. She didn't mean to do it though. It was an accident that and happened really? that day on shooting. Yes, so it's the... So, like, she actually fucking, like, dented that car with her head? With her head, yeah. Oh, and, they, and they left it in. Oh. Well, it's the well, episode where she goes... In, you point. have to. She went through it. So, it's the episode where she's going into the shoe store to buy shoes. Her car declines and declines again. She tries to run out the door with the shoes and rams her head into the side of a car trying to escape the shop. And that 100% happened. It was legit. <laughs> Damn. And they left it in. So not only can our girl play a raunchy, foul-mouthed man, but she can also do physical comedy. What more do you need? But she actually can do physical comedy. <laughs> she, she literally gets me every time. And, and what I do have to say, and not that I agree with all these people, but I can talk to a lot of men who I know don't think women are funny. And I actually have something to say about that as we're rapping mm -hmm. that I know they don't and I, I don't fault them for it but they literally have no room in their brains to even accept <laughs> funny women yeah. but I've even gotten some of these people to admit that like okay yes Kayla Nolson is actually really fucking funny and to me that means a lot that there are people out there that never considered that women could be funny. Well, I think just saying in general, like, oh, no, women are funny. Funny. That's such an exaggeration that one example could just could easily crush. Kaylin and Olsen is what I bring up every single time. It's yeah. like, you watch three episodes. You got to give it three. Mm -hmm. If you don't think Sweet D is funny, then I think there's something wrong with you, and I just don't know how to have a conversation with you. Well, here's the thing. I like, think we're some done. Some people don't like that style and level of comedy. Like, I, I don't like... It's only sunny in Philadelphia. That's true. Comedy is very subjective. Like, comedy is subjective. Yeah, but you so think women are funny, so. I do think, but, you know, <laughs> just saying, there are different styles and different types of comedy that... I think I'm going to get Rose to enjoy it, and I just think they haven't given it enough of a chance. We'll convert. I'm That's sorry. how stubborn I am. No, honestly, like, you have to let go of your... Uh, wanting to have a morally correct character. Look, one of these days, no, they're, they're, they're morally, correctly. they're morally apprehensive. They do not care. deserve we good or uncringy times. No, it's the cringe that gets me. Who cares it's about the like cringe? The, yeah, the cringe is what's cringe. good. It's good like, cringe. I don't care about having a morally correct or corrupt character. I really don't. I mean, some of my personal favorite characters. Why does cringe bother you so much? Do I you think? don't know. I, I honestly don't know, and that is a question for. Another day. Yeah, you can think about it. <laughs> Get back to us. Not here, no. You figure it out. We'll we'll I'll continue. Always here. I'll figure it out. Maybe one day, maybe not. But what were you saying, Brody? I was about to say, like, we just gotta like hand pick like a marathon of Always Sunny for you. Yeah, hand pick it. We'll skip the toenail, the the knife, the knife toe stuff. Well, you would like what that. The fuck? Don't ask. Uh, Charlie McDennis, you would like. Yeah. Who? The gang made a board game specifically for them. Um, we're talking about female representation, and we're not here to talk about uh, female Ghostbusters. Rose, no. we're, not, we're not here to talk about female Ghostbusters. It's no. not happening. No. No. But what I do want to talk about is the gang beats Boggs, too. Oh, yeah, where they make fun of female and Ghostbusters. And can we talk about not only Sweet D, but the amazing cast of female characters in general in It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia? Oh, Max Mom is my favorite. Uh, for me, it's Artemis. Artemis is great. I, I love Artemis. Who is Artemis? Artemis is Dee's acting Dee's friend. acting friend from, imp, like, acting classes in the first season. Who's, like, way more hedonistic. Uh, hedonistic is the best way to describe Artemis is a hedonistic crystal mommy. Yeah. But, um... <laughs> but, <laughs> That's the first time I really heard the word crystal mommy. Oh, I really? got it so hard. Yeah. But, well, like, hippie-dippy, dippy, hippie dippy, healing your auras. Uh, yeah, a crystal mommy. Okay. Treat, Artemis treat is Treat it cold with peyote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put, like, like like stones up your vagina to heal it like weird shit like that yeah it's actually been scientifically proven i'm not putting anything up there it's an out only system <laughs> that okay? was a lie oh. yeah of course it fucking is <laughs> all of you people out there that buy vaginal steams are fucking dumb 
Yeah. Yeah. I Return it to goop. I have seen vaginal steam trucks around our old restaurant mm-hmm. and in Durham. Literally people that have outfitted their cars that like sell their vaginal steams. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen in my life. Y'all need to take health class. I can't fucking do it. So I can't fucking do so, it. So that that's not a good thing? No. That's, it's an out only system. So you do I, not so need I, to put anything so up there to them? clean it or take care of it. It takes care of itself. Well, I'm going to go return some orders. Um, <laughs> hopefully I kept the receipts. <laughs> That's um, Jess's fun fact for the day. Uh, don't put anything up your vagina that isn't a tampon or a penis or a dildo. Fun fact. Or a finger. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's literally all you should be putting in there. That's that's the ultimate showstopper oh, wait, no, right yeah, there. Yeah, you're welcome. No, no, no. But if there is something that you would like to stick up your vagina, there's one thing that'll help you. What, what is, is it? Ah, uh, you know what it is. It's Astroglide. Astroglide! The miracle substance known as Astroglide. So if you do want to put other things up your vagina, which I don't recommend, but if you are going to do it, use Astroglide. Use Astroglide. It'll make it in and out way faster. <laughs> uh. Also, you don't even have to use it for that. Put it on your head, you'll regrow your hair. Put it on your... Elbows, you'll get moist skin. Put it on your butt and scoot down the hallway. Hell yeah. Yeah, whatever you want to do, you do it, man. Your car out of gas, put in some Astro Glide. <laughs> don't, don't do that. Put it on your sled. <coughs> You're put it on your sled. You'll slip down the hill way faster. Yeah. Have you ever seen a Christmas, Christmas Vacation? Similar effect. Rub Astro Glide on the bottom of a trash can lid and just fucking go. Yep. But don't get hurt. Because then we'd be liable. No, we wouldn't. Yeah, we wouldn't. Astroglide would be liable. <laughs> Blame would, Astroglide. They, they wouldn't either. <laughs> yeah, the use, the directions it. are, the use is clearly on the label. If you turn the bottle over, gang. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> Had to get that oh, out. God. Kaylin okay. Olsen. Uses Astroglide. My final. She might. I don't know. Oh, my I mean, gosh. She, I'm sure she does. Kaylin Olsen, what, what kind of lubricant do you use if you do? No. CP, no. why don't you tell me, Sweet no. D? And if you want to... What? No. Sweet D. No. Sweet D. Kaylin Olsen, specifically, if you want to tell us what kind of lube you use and what it's like being no. married to your co-star, Rob, uh, you can contact us. You can contact us at oneframeoff at gmail.com. That's oneframeoff at gmail.com. Yeah, we haven't got any emails. Yeah, Not too many. Haven't got any emails. Share us your movie opinions, funny theories, uses for Astroglide, or just how you're feeling today. Oh, uses for Astroglide other than sexual intercourse would be wonderful. Yeah. We need more ideas. I have a lot of Astroglide, and I've run out of creativity. So Yeah, please. we've no, run out no. of things to do. At this point, we're just going to fill a baby pool with it and hang out. I'll just cannonball in there. Oh yeah, you can. We can, like, Gertie play in it, too. I'm sure it's safe for dogs. Is it Astro Glide? Is it? You can tell I'm sure us. You, I'm, I'm sure you can Google that shit. I'm sure, it's, I'm sure it's water-based, and it's actually fine for it. We can throw our dogs in there. See what happens. Throw your dogs in some Astro Glide. <laughs> <laughs> all, um, all. <laughs> do we have any more uh, honorable mentions before we close out the show? I can't think of any currently I have which makes one on me my, really sad <laughs> I, have one on, I have one on my mind and it's just something I've been thinking about in terms of like we talk a lot about like movies and TV and stuff but like in terms of the music industry uh, oh shit Billie Eilish has been just like oh, yeah. such an inspiration I do love Billie Eilish but yeah. like Hank Pink. Pink Pink is good Pink I was, but like Billie Eilish, like I was watching her on SNL being like fucking hilarious, obviously. And <laughs> really? then I, Billie Eilish is good. And then I saw her musical performance, and usually when they have like a big name on SNL, it's like, okay, now bring this set and these lights and 500 background well, dancers. Well, that's because the acoustics at SNL are horrendously terrible. But the, like, but like, like <laughs> known to be very bad. But then they had really? fucking Billie Eilish yeah. there. And it's just her sitting on the floor with, with her, her brother, probably. with her brother playing guitar, no auto tune, and it's just as bare I, bones as it gets. And it's what perfect. I don't think is uh, what Billie Eilish isn't credited with enough is how talented her brother Phineas is, and how much his producing has affected her success. 
Because, and I hate to bring that up in our female centric episode, but honestly, like Phineas really is super talented. But I think and, like and has a their their collaboration is why it's so good. Maybe that's like the thing that the men can take away from this. Like, maybe, <laughs> it's not always about you. No, yeah. it's, it's sometimes not. the best thing you can do is support the ladies around your life. No, yeah, I agree or with take you. Take away like the stuff like if you support them and they support you, just take away the lessons that you learn from them. Yeah, yeah. Well. Also, what I do love about Billie Eilish, by Billie Eilish, and I know we're wrapping up, is I know she's getting older now, so she's like, um, oh. you know, she's exploring her sexuality, which is what happens around age 18, 19. But what I did love when I, when she first jumped on this scene was, and I wish there was more representation of this when I was younger, besides fucking Avril Lavigne, which just looked like a poser mm. bitch, is um, I love this young generation of women. The... They wear baggier clothes. They wear street style clothes. And I cannot tell you, and this is going to make me just sound so old and stupid, but like when I was coming up and I was younger and going to bars and clubs and all that stuff, like heels, baby, you wore heels. You want to know what young girls wear now when they go out? Whatever the fuck they want. Sneakers. They wear fucking sneakers. Popular clothing has become so much more about comfort. And that is something I appreciate mm. so much about uh, the Zennials. So much. Modern fashion. Zennials. Yeah. Modern fashionist style has become 100% about comfort. And that's where we're headed as a culture. And I couldn't be a bigger fan. And I, I Billie Eilish, whether she hey. wants to or not, represents that. I know she's trying to hide her tits. They're gigantic. I'm just going to say it. They are. They're huge. Yeah, Brady knows. They're huge. I'm just thinking about her, like her last album cover. And it's like, oh yeah, they are. They're, 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 she's she's got a lovely figure. She's a beautiful woman. Mm-hmm. She had to wear those baggy clothes to cover them suckers up when she was 17 and doing tours. Yeah, no, like, and also like logistically, being 17 is like, like that. You have to cover it up. Yeah. Well, I just want to say I'm not condoning any of these thoughts, but like ultimately, if you know you have a thought like that, like keep it to your fucking self and don't act on it. And sure as shit, don't tell a bunch of people Give about it. Yourself, well, yeah. Stuff it down a little bit. Put it, uh, and we're going to jump back into It's Always Sunny. Uh, put it in a box and just keep an eye on it, you know? Or burn but, it. <gasps> no. you, you keep an eye on it. You lock it down and you keep an eye on no, it. Can, can, we, can we do that where we physically write shit out? Like, dare, write your dark secrets, your thoughts and everything. Put them in a shoebox and then... And send them to OneFrameOff at gmail.com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let that shit burn. I thought you meant talk about it here, and I was like, Rose, my dark secrets would make you guys look like fucking Mickey and Minnie Mouse. (laughs) (laughs) No, I'm talking about just chucking it to a fire, dude. No, I'm just so much older. Like, like, you would be surprised. Like, shit just happens, man. Like, (laughs) I've also moved around a lot. Like, (laughs) it just, just... You'd be surprised how little you care about an area, but you've only lived there for two years, and then you find out you're leaving. <laughs> like, mm. All right, who's closing this out? Uh, Brody, I was about to mansplain say, your way out of this. All right, let me mansplain. Yeah. Um, just be fucking nice to people. Don't let like what their present self seems to be just kind of block what you already think of them. Because the fact of the matter is, they're a fucking stranger. You don't know shit about them. Yeah. Don't judge a book by the cover either. No, I, well, look, I disagree with that statement entirely. Uh, You can judge a book by its cover, and that's why most people do. It's called a defense mechanism. But then you gotta, but if it's an offense mechanism, you gotta really think, why are you defending yourself? That's, where is it coming from? It's animal nature. It's literally like telling a zebra, like, um, that could be like a lion that isn't gonna attack you today. <laughs> Everything's gonna be. But fine. what if it's just a big kitty who wants to be friends, and you have a laser pointer? Does that is that a thing? If I if I went to like a lion pen in the zoo with you a laser pointer, go to the zoo it is. In the spring? Let's go to the thing. fucking zoo. Yeah. The shiny thing. Bro. I'll go to the zoo. zoo. We should go to the zoo. Yo, Zane hates the zoo. zoo. Let's go. To Zoos the make zoo. me sad, but I do. Is kinda. there a brewery by the zoo? The Bruin Zoo. <laughs> The Zoo and Brew. Oh, that's such a good one. Owned by Zaboomafu. <laughs> All right. Bye, y'all. We're going to the Brew and we Zoo. We can't top it. We can't top it. Good no. night, everybody. Good night, y'all. Good We're going night. to the Zoo and Brew. Peace out.